here from Pop Turner speak to Sam Morelos about that 90s show part two, which is dropping worldwide on Netflix June 27th. Welcome back to the show. It's so good to see you again. It's so great to be here and not in my car this time, which is great. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, yeah. <laughs> Things are um, happening. Things are happening. Things are <laughs> happening. Um, season ones are interesting because when we talked last time, there's a lot of kind of like unknowns, right? Like you've never played this character before. We've never seen this character. What was it like returning and playing Nikki again for season two? Like, did you like know a lot about this character? Did you know enough? Were you still learning? Like, what was that like going back on set? I, first of all, getting back on set was a dream come true. I love everyone. And especially because of, uh, I haven't seen the majority of my cast for like a year. Yeah. So coming back, it was just like such a lovely environment to be back. I felt like I, it was a family reunion. Yeah. And coming back to play Nikki was really exciting for me because I knew that I, I had an inkling that they wanted to do something different with her character this season. Mm -hmm. But like, I learned more and more about her every time we got a new script. Yeah. And it was just, I, I think I've gotten closer to Nikki for sure over this past year and especially during the this new season. Also because you see her doing more things, interacting with more people in the cast and yeah. um, just relationships. The relationships between everyone, they're mm -hmm. all growing exponentially in this uh, second part. So um, it's it's just been a really great experience. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of to add to that a little bit, so much happens before you go to camera for a season of that 90s show. There's all the discussions about kind of like what you said, the scripts, the character arcs, you're talking to everyone, you know, there's kind of literally like going back in time, like you were going back to the 90s, you know what I mean? And right. everything. Um, so in a lot of ways, from a storytelling acting perspective, you could see that as like two journeys, right? You could see that like before filming that 90s show and after filming that 90s show. Or do you see it as one big journey with multiple steps from a storytelling acting perspective? That is a really good question. I think that um, everyone's process is different. For me, uh, ooh, I really have to think about this one. That's a good question. I like that. Um, I That's think why you that, came back on the show, because it's a good question. I mean, come on. <laughs> we're asking all the right questions here. Uh, I think it is one big journey with multiple steps. Okay. And that is like a a, a simplified version of it. Mm -hmm. I, for, when I do character building, when I do like my homework, per se, um, I journal, I mood board. I'm not sure. Uh, like, I remember telling you about this last time. I, I have a specific That 90s Show journal. Yes. Um, and it's dedicated to not only the show, but also like Nikki and her arc and her character arc and like her relationships with everyone else. Mm -hmm. And not only is it, um, not only do I have to think about uh, what's happening with the other characters, I also have to think about, you're right, the period yep. and like what is the the time period asking for. And I th that's, one of the steps with that, I just have to Google things here and there as I get a new script. Yeah, Because totally. every time I get a new script, then there are references sprinkled throughout it. So I want to know what exactly I'm talking about before I say my line. So it's things like that. I, I don't think that it's, I can't really Google the 90s and then all of a sudden have this, uh, very deep and a deep understanding of the 90s just by researching articles yep. i think just to have like a general idea no totally um, so like i i like um researching per script so that i have like the specific idea of like what are they asking for from from me it's one journey with like 98 steps let's be honest 98 <laughs> steps oh my god there are so many moving parts to any anything 100%. like this. I, oh, I'm a creative as well. I, I just wrapped a few uh, short horror films that I wrote and produced. So that's so exciting! Yeah, Congratulations! Thank you. And it's it's there's a lot of moving parts. You're, I agree. Oh, yeah. Um, you get a script, like you get the scripts, and mm -hmm. you know, it's like one full season of playing Nikki, but like like we said there's so much that kind of happens this season and like you're reading what happens and it's one thing i feel like to read it and then it's one thing to go film it so what's right. that like for you that kind of journey of like from script to screen like kind of 
preparing, but then actually seeing it like come to life on the screen yeah. for you specifically. Yeah. Um, what's cool about multicam sitcom and multicam sitcom schedule is that we have a table read at the beginning of the week and then we go straight into rehearsals. So mm -hmm. like from receiving the script and like rehearsing it over the weekend, like knowing my lines and preparing for the week, um, I get to do it on my feet too. And I get to work with the directors. I get to work with, for this part, Gail Mancuso, phenomenal, phenomenal director. Um, we also got to work with Laura Prepon again this season, but that's not until part three, October watch out for that one mm -hmm. but uh i get to explore and find new things every single time i uh put it on its feet mm -hmm. um from pay like when it's on paper it's it's a lot more two-dimensional it's paper you're reading yeah. the line yeah you, you can when you first receive when i first received the script though i'm running it through like oh how am i gonna say this how how yes. do I think it's going to look? But there's look. also like aesthetic and everything else that comes afterwards. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm running it through in my head. How am I going to say this? How am I going to say this? But once we put it on its feet, there are so many, like, it's also a collaborative effort too, because it's mm -hmm. not just how I'm going to say it. How am I going to react to what my scene partner is telling me? Mm -hmm. How is How do I think my scene partner is going to react? Because everything in a scene, like, when I'm Nikki, I'm trying to, whatever I'm saying, I'm trying mm -hmm. to get a certain reaction out of my scene partner. Yes. I'm whoever I'm talking to. Like, that's also just like a human thing. When mm -hmm. you're saying something to someone, it's because you want, um, you, you want something from them, 100%. whether it's empathy or, uh, I don't know, you want to make them happy or whatever. Regardless, you always want something from the other person. Yeah. And that kind of, reaction um bear, uh whatever the opposite of passive is mm -hmm. um, so to answer your question the process from like script to having it come up uh, like from script to screen it's both uh like i take time for myself to prepare to know my lines so then when i'm with my scene partner when i'm with the director we get to play around and just bounce off of each other mm -hmm. uh, and really be present in the moment uh it's it's better for me to think about not having it be on screen per 100%. se yeah, yeah like just being present in the moment as Nikki and as Nate or as Gwen, like we're both here in that moment together mm -hmm. and we're trying to um, make each other feel things. We're going to get to specific questions about part two, but one more question about the craft, because I love these. I love these. Are the, I love, I love talking about this stuff. It's so interesting oh, yeah. to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Um, When I spoke to you for season one, yes. When you were, when you were in your car, okay. um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I established in the first question because I always find like when whenever you're doing something that's like a reimagination or like a spin-off or something that like is based on something that we've seen before, right? Like we saw characters from that 70s show, but this is a whole dude new thing, right? This is that 90s show. I always think it's a really unique situation, right? Because it's like you know what's going on, but at the same time, you don't know what's going on. And like you answer that question, like, you know, it's cool because you know some of the characters, but we don't know any of these characters. Are you in the cast kind of like like, is that kind of like sunk in now that you established that it is a unique situation and a unique kind of job in that perspe per perspective? Because now you've yeah. done it for like two seasons, right? Like it was new early on, right? But it's so cool to think about, right? Like, you know what's going on, but at the end of the day, you don't know what's going on with the, this world. Yeah, it's, um, it is a very interesting and unique situation. And I think like, because I... Part of like being in the gang, I'm not someone who is I my character isn't someone who's connected uh directly to the main show, the mm -hmm. original show. Um, I feel a little more freedom to discover and do whatever it is that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Like with my character, I don't really have to think about like, oh, like for like Callie, for example, she kind of has to also do um uh, like a different kind of 
uh, character study than I do yeah. because she also has her parents to go off of. What mannerisms is she going to take from Eric, from Donna? I have a little more liberty where I don't have to like be constrained to that. Yeah. Uh, I but think that that's even still, more challenging though. Oh, it is. It's, <laughs> it, both of them are, both things are challenging in their own way. Because you're like clean slate. Like you're showing up to this world that we kind of know exists, but we don't know this person at all, if you think about it. Right, and I like my objectives, like as Sam, I want people to know and understand Nikki. I want people to get to know Yeah, because it was like you, I'd say Maxwell and Ashley, right? We're like, I would say that. And and Ren. And Ren, yes. All four, yeah, exactly. All four of us. We're That's all kind of but scary at the same time, right? Right. Because there's no like um what's what's cool about being part of that 90s show is that there is that built-in audience from that 70s show. Yes. And there is already like an inherent love for the universe that uh the Turners, Marcy Carcy, and um like uh, like everyone, like they that they created initially yes. when they created the 70s show. There's that love and there's that like willingness to uh, not willingness to learn, but yeah. like openness and excitement for what we're creating. Yep. Uh, that that being said, it like you don't know like us four as well as Donna, Eric, and then yeah. their kid. Yeah. So it is a different challenge in and of itself, but it's also really exciting to be like, okay, well, no one really, no one really expects anything from me. There's yeah. no real expectation of who I, as a, my character, is supposed to look like who's supposed to be. And even for Mace and Callie being the children of people in the main cast, yep. they still get to create something new because 100%. you're not an exact replica of your parents. Totally. No, 100%. No, it's, it's very interesting to think about. Okay, I am putting you on the spot here. This will determine, I'm okay either or, but it's your choice. This will determine when this episode, when, when this airs. Do we talk spoilers or no spoilers? I mean, it's hey, it's up to you. Oh, but I already that's said your... it was, I already said it was up to you. No, okay, <laughs> and then my decision is that that's up to you because you are the interviewer. Um, oh. <laughs> I have never made a decision in my life, PD Beats, and it is not <laughs> gonna start today. Like, you know what? We're not gonna do spoilers. <laughs> all right, all right, that's cool too. Oh, okay, okay, you can still answer this question. Um, we see a lot of growth of Nikki this season. A lot of stuff happens where she has to kind of adapt and figure things out. Um, yeah. did you instantly kind of notice, like, because like the, the self reflection component is huge for all the characters this season compared to last season, right? Like the growth and everything. Did you notice that, like, immediately? Like, wow, like Nikki has a lot. Like, a lot's happening. She has to make a lot of decisions. Like, there was a lot in like the first couple of episodes for this with Nikki. Oh, oh yeah. There's there's a lot of stuff that happens. And I, whenever I got the script, I was so excited to see her growing and changing and co- really coming into her own and questioning um, the questioning what she thought she knew about herself and the world I smirk because, because I'm like maybe we should have talked spoilers but like <laughs> is that a spoiler no I'm just saying like I want to talk about you know I know I know <sighs> okay I know but uh Nate and Nikki break I... up we're talking spoilers they break up okay yeah okay fine <laughs> I was like I'm trying I'm trying so hard to be like they break up think... we'll not say more break... than that they break they break up they break up yeah um and I never saw Nikki as someone who defined herself uh, based on who she was with. Mm -hmm. I know that Nikki is able to be alone Mm -hmm. because she's a very strong, independent woman. And that, just like me as the actor, I saw it as so exciting because I knew that even though she is her own person, she's also a human being. And... You're going to feel the impact of a breakup. No yeah. matter how independent you are, the fact is, is that human like when you lose a connection that yeah. is meaning, that's gonna impact you. That's gonna change the way that you act around this person. Yeah. Uh, like, it's gonna change your perspective on uh like 
things like that. There's also like things about self worth too, yeah. right? It builds up too. Like it doesn't just happen. Like people are gonna see the episodes June twenty seventh. Like there's like a yeah. big build up to like oh. what happens. You know what I mean? And like, it's, it's very well done in that regard. Like, what was that like reading that in the script? Cause it's not just like, was, well, like, we're, like th- there's like levels of getting there. If you think about it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. There were so many levels. And, um, what was, what's interesting is that we don't know what's happening until we wrap one episode. Yeah. So like, yeah. We shoot an episode on, we finish shooting an episode on a Friday and that night we get the script for the next week. Okay. So we literally, all we can do is like kind of guess what might be happening. So it was like so surprising and shocking to even see it written down that we broke up because yeah, it was kind of like, oh, maybe they will probably happen. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe I didn't it won't. see it coming. I thought they were going to figure that out. I, 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 you know, they make this whole thing about Leah, Leah and Jay. And I was like, exactly. that's going to be, yeah. Like I didn't, I, I didn't see it coming. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Which is, oh, I love that. I'm so it's glad. It's weird, you didn't right? The thing, because it's like, yeah, but it's like, again, though, and it's brought up like 30 times. Like they yeah. didn't really kiss. They were about to kiss. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But like still, it, from a Nikki perspective, yes. if I were to be like, uh, if I were to see someone I cared about, like my boyfriend, almost kiss someone else. Yes. Like, it doesn't matter if. And they're teens. Uh, they're they're teens. Ha- yeah. yeah. And they're teenagers, right? <laughs> and it's like someone that you trust and like, it's a lie yeah. that's been kept from you for like a year. Yeah. Like, if you've been lying to me for a year, for months, and yeah. now it's coming out that you almost, like. It's a breakup with like so many elements behind it. It's the intention. (laughs) Like it doesn't matter if you did it or not. It's the fact that you even thought about it. And the only reason that you didn't was because someone walked in on you. And then that kind of just like, I feel like that breakup kind of just, I mean, Nikki, in my opinion, I mean, cause I'm going to ask you this, but like, this is cause, um, my favorite arc this season is Nikki. That's my favorite arc. So now, I, no, but I'm a little no, that's my next question. I know I want to know <laughs> who your favorite arc is of character this season, but you're not allowed to say your character. Oh, I'm not allowed to say my no. character? Besides uh, Nikki, besides we can agree that Nikki has the best arc, but well, cool. I mean, you're, you're, but I you're biased. Tell, I'll take that dub. You're I'll biased. Take that dub. Of you're... course I'm biased. <laughs> I love Nikki. I mean, yeah. Okay, but like, even from an unbiased standpoint, I feel like there has been such a huge arc um, in her story. Um, oh, I thought you were going to bring up another character. You're still... Yes, Nikki's going <laughs> to... Uh, okay, fine. Uh, yes. Not talking about Nikki. I also really like Gwen's arc. Yeah, absolutely. I love Gwen's arc, and I love the conversations that she starts. Yep. And I love that... Um, I have to give kudos kudos to the writers yep. um, because the way that they're unafraid to bring up those hard conversations yep. uh, is really like it, it's really inspiring. Yep. And it's, I love, and I also love the way that um, Gwen and Nikki's relationship is forming too. Yes. I got to work. We didn't really see Ash- much of that in season one. No. And I got to work like a lot more with Ashley this season because of it. And I'm mm-hmm. so grateful because like that is now one of my best friends because we spent all this time. That's the best. Time, right. Yeah. And um, I just know that we have so much co- chemistry off screen as friends because we're buddies and being able to um use that and take advantage of that chemistry and on screen is like it's it's very fulfilling it's like because you get to act with someone you know um you can trust and you know that um it's gonna give exact the same exact energy that back to you that you give them yep absolutely i i just I like the emphasis on like female friendships too, the growth between all of the the bonds. Um, Because I personally don't love it when, uh, like, 
women are pitted against each other. Like, oh, you took my boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. Things like that. And I liked the way this season, it wasn't about like, oh, Nikki hates Leia. It wasn't about that. It was about the friendship, right? And the connections between that she has with her support system yes, too. Yes, 100%. And, right. So like, we were, I, would, I don't, from my standpoint, I wasn't blaming Leia. I was mad at Nate. Yep. And... Um, you were a little upset at Gwen. Well, but... I was upset at Gwen because, like, I wanted a, I wanted a friend. Well, no, there. because that that was. Oh, it's so interesting you bring that up because you see, I'm like thinking about it from like a a creative perspective because that's so interesting to think about because it's like, you know, it's not like like your like Nikki's perspective is I'm just Nate's brother to you, uh, Nate's Nate's girl, like I'm your brother's right. girlfriend, exactly. right? Like, and like, yeah. That is also something that I struggled with as Sam oh, last season. I was like, man, I'm only, all I am right now is Nate's girlfriend. I'm just Nate's girlfriend. And then that um, being brought up in the second episode of the season, mm -hmm. like I was, when I got that script, I was all like, oh shit, this, this, this is, is going to be this is, this is for Nikki. Be, like this, this is going to go, yeah, yeah this is and you get to sing uh, this season, which is awesome too. Yeah, it was. What's funny is that, like, I have always been like, music is a very big yeah. part of me, and I post covers, whatever. It's like I'm, I'm just a very musical person, mm -hmm. and I remember you're very good at it too. I just want to say, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. I get it from my mom. My mom's a singer. PD Beats. And... I'm a, I was a drummer, so I'm a musician as well. So Bird. that was my stage Love name that. when I played in bands. Like I was PD Beats, and I just kept it. That's so great. <laughs> So music, uh, yeah, it's always been yeah, it's so yeah, yeah. important music, to us. And I, I was, I, I think I, I posted some of my originals on YouTube, yeah. and then we were doing a run through, and one of the writers, PA Mateo, he comes up to me. He's all like, "Oh, I saw your originals. It was, it was made. It was put up by this thing called Camper Snap Sessions. Mm -hmm. He, and um, he's all like, "Oh, I saw the YouTube video." Um, and the link was in a subreddit, uh, like a night and that 90 show subreddit. And I watched it. It was really good. And then one of the writers from the writer's room was right next to him while Mateo was saying that his name's King and King was all like, wait, what are you talking about? What, what is this thing? And I was like, oh yeah, I wrote some originals and I sang them and this little camper van. It was really fun. And you were just like, as a matter of fact, here's a demo. Or <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I was just talking about it. I was all like, oh, I'm I just mean, like, I... I'm just <laughs> I'm not one to like self promote. I really should. I'm just should teasing, of course. I get. It. <laughs> no, I really should be better at it. But yeah. I was like, oh, I was talking about this thing because he asked me, <laughs> and then, right, and then the next day, more like three, four writers come up to me that are like, oh, we watched your YouTube video in the writers' room today. It was all so good. And I was all like, everyone's seen it now. That's crazy. Amazing. And then like, three episodes later, I'm singing in the thing. So much so, going on this season. So like. I don't, I didn't, I don't know if it was like in the plan that I was going to be singing. Yeah. Because um, they didn't tell me until like an episode or two before just for me to prep. Yeah. Um, and like see my ENT. Just about, but I'm like, I I never knew. So sometimes, sometimes I like to think that like, oh, because they saw this video on a subreddit of that 90s show, they're all like, oh, why, why don't we just make Sam sing? <laughs> No, it's so it's so cool. I'm so happy for you. You're so you are so good in this show. You're so good at what you do. Thanks. Um, and no, I wish you all the best. Just continuing with the acting and the the singer songwriting stuff too, because it's all it's cool that it's all kind of what it's all storytelling. Sam Rells is a storyteller. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, that ninety show part two, June twenty seventh worldwide on. Netflix so much happening with Nikki this season Sam so good catching up thank you so much for coming back on the show thank you so much Pity Beats oh this was great uh your Instagram account is just your name if people want to keep up date with everything exactly well it's like my name uh it's my last name and then my first name Morello Sam gotcha thank yeah. you check that out <laughs> well this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes Sam Morello's plays Nikki in part that 90s show part two, June 27th, World on Netflix. Until next time, this is Sam and Pity Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. 
This has been an Autograph Communications production.